We're still relatively early in the story of foldable and flexible smartphones, and that's a good thing. It means companies are trying different shapes and sizes to see what works, and that means variety. Oppo has just announced its first proper consumer foldable smartphone called the Find N. And it might look similar to other devices on the market from other manufacturers, but there are some changes here that make it a drastically different experience. I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint, and I've had the pleasure of using the Oppo Find N for the past few days, so I thought I'd bring you my initial impressions. And if you like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and tap the notification bell so make sure you don't miss any more. Even in the unboxing experience, you get the sense that this phone isn't an ordinary phone. When the box lid opens, it lifts up the insides at an angle, presenting the phone to you, just so that you know you've got something a bit special here. Put the top section to one side and you get to the goodies underneath. The first thing you unwrap is the power adapter, which has its own black card sleeve. It's a 33 watt charger, so not Oppo's fastest, and it has a USB-A output port rather than Type-C. Then there's a sleek card sleeve, which contains all the usual paperwork like quick start guides and warranty information. This also contains the classic Oppo SIM ejector tool. Underneath that is your USB-A to Type-C cable, and that's it. All the goodies in the box. So let's take a look at the phone. Now look at the Find N on its own, and you might think Oppo copied a page from Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold playbook. But when you see them next to each other, you'll know that's not exactly the case. Oppo's Find N has that familiar book-style folding phone appearance, but its aspect ratio makes it a different proposition to Samsung's. It's noticeably shorter and wider than the Samsung, and that gives a real benefit when it comes to using the front screen for, well, anything. You get more space for video and a less cramped typing experience, plus a better viewfinder for taking selfies or vlogging with the main cameras. Plus, you don't need to stretch as far to get into the top corners. It's easier to use one-handed, that's for sure. The shorter size also means it's a more compact phone, having a surface area that's smaller than an iPhone mini. Although its thickness when shut means it's basically like having two iPhone minis stacked on top of each other. The rear of the phone bears a resemblance to Oppo's Find X3 Pro, although a more squat version. The triple camera housing sits on top of a curved or ramped up protrusion on the back, and this particular model features a purplish finish that shimmers, shines and reflects golden light at various angles, depending on the light in the area. The only real downside of the finish on this one that we've seen so far is that fingerprints show up really easily. As for the metal edges, those are pure silver polished aluminium and feel really strong and sturdy. Plus, features a fingerprint sensor in the side that means you can unlock your phone whether it's open or shut. The hinge feels really sturdy too, and so far we've not experienced any wobble or looseness whether the phone is open or shut. This hinge's spine is the only part of the metal that isn't completely shiny, with a matte finished groove running down the centre. And the hinge can hold the screen at various angles, so it's not just a case of having it open or shut. So if you want to rest it down during video calls, you can. Now when you do open it, you'll notice the screen doesn't feature that single distinctive crease that we've seen in Samsung's phones so far, and that's because of the way it curves inside the body. It's similar to the Moto Razr in that regard. There are some subtle ripples in that flexible screen if you look in the right light, which you can feel if you rub your finger or thumb along it, but it's nowhere near as noticeable as any others we've seen so far from any other manufacturer. It's practically invisible and undetectable most of the time. So moving on to the actual displays themselves. And there's lots to like here. Both screens are AMOLED panels boasting up to 1000 nits peak brightness. And apart from the obvious size difference, they differ in refresh rates too. The main display on the inside features variable refresh rates that can go as low as 1Hz, all the way up to 120Hz. And they adapt based on the content that you're viewing to save battery. The internal display measures 7.1 inches and has an almost square ratio. That means it's not perfect for watching videos on. You get pretty hefty black bars on it. However, there are some software tweaks that make it really useful. With an app open in full screen, a swipe down the middle with two fingers turns it into split screen mode, essentially giving you two regular phone screens in the same panel side by side. Or you can pinch with four fingers to launch the app in a floating window. That you can resize and then move around as you need. 
And when you open or close the phone, you can continue in the same app that you've had it open, whether you're moving from the front screen to the main or the main to the front screen. Now, moving on to hardware and performance and the internal components on this thing scream flagship power. It's got the Snapdragon 888 platform running the show, and that's alongside either 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM. The amount of RAM you get depends on your storage model, with the lower model featuring 256 gigabytes of storage and the higher boasting a storage capacity of 512. As for the battery capacity, that's largely a standard affair, with 4,500 milliamp hours. It's what you get on a lot of Oppo's phones and should be plenty to get you through a full day. Oppo fans might be a little disappointed to see there's no super fast 65 watt SuperVOOC charging, but with a 33 watt flash charging variant it should charge quickly enough, giving you around 70% in half an hour. It also has the versatility of Qi wireless charging, and if you use an Oppo Air VOOC charger, you'll get 15 watt speeds wirelessly. Plus, you can reverse charge other devices. Now briefly, camera-wise, there's a familiar sensor here. Oppo's used a 50 megapixel Sony sensor that's in the primary camera many times before, most notably in the Find X3 Pro. It's got optical image stabilization and phase detection autofocus. That should mean sharp, vibrant, and blur-free images. It's joined by an ultra-wide and a telephoto 2x zoom camera. Those are 16 megapixel and 13 megapixel respectively. Plus, there's also two selfie cameras, one punched into each display, and both of those use the same 32 megapixel sensor. Of course, I'm going to need a bit more time with this phone to bring you my full thoughts on the Oppo Find N, but there's lots to like here. I'm a big fan of the compact form factor, and the software tweaks that enable split screen and floating windows are great, and necessary additions. Plus, the fact that there's no single distinct screen crease is wonderful. It's a very promising phone and one that I hope gets optimized for Western markets soon because, as it stands, Oppo has only announced launch in China. So let me know what you think in the comments below or you can get me on Twitter if you want to. I'm at Cam Bunton over there. If you did like this video, it would mean a great deal if you'd hit that thumbs up and then subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.